this is Guy Delosier, Senior Applications Engineer at Go Engineer. Today I'm going to show you some complex curve-driven patterns. I've already done a video on this model in the upper left here that shows a simplistic curve-driven pattern. This is a planar surface, so it makes it pretty easy to have a curve-driven pattern follow that surface or that edge. Now, we get into some more shapes here like this coil here for cooling, uh, air compressors, oil uh, hydraulic units, things like that, and then another variation of that over here. And then we've got a baseball, putting the stitches on a baseball. It gets a little more interesting. So I don't need to dwell on this one up here. I can just shut that off. Um, let's look, take a look at this one here. Now this one technically isn't even a curve-driven pattern. Basically what we got here are two sweeps. If I roll back here, We've got a sweep that makes the tubing, and then we've got a sweep that makes the coil. Okay, the coil basically is a sketch here that intrudes into the side of the wall of the tubing a little bit, and then we're using a sweep and having that sweep rotate around our path a certain number of times over the length of this thing. Come to the advanced parts class to show you all about it. So let's not worry about this one anymore. Let's go to the, a real curve driven pattern. This is a real curve driven pattern. Now, what we've got here is we've got a couple of sweeps here, or at least one sweep here to start with, and that would be the tubing. And we're following a central curve. And then a single body was made and then bent up as sheet metal as a, a separate body and then that separate body was patterned along the sweep path. So if I don't, don't want that, this takes a long time to rebuild so I'm not going to go there. Bodies always pattern very very well. They never have a problem. They always pattern perfectly every time no matter how simple or how complex. Unlike features, sometimes features don't want to play right. But bodies always play right. And at the end, we combine this thing together to make it one single body as if it had all been soldered or brazed together uh, at the end. Now, let's look at the baseball. That's the interesting one here. What I want to do is put these stitches on the baseball. So if I suppress my curve-driven pattern that I've already got here, I've got my cutout here for these two pieces here, that's one piece, this is another piece, where the cow, these two pieces of cowhide have to be sewn together. Got a little detail ridge here to make it look nice. And I've got two separate bodies here, one here, this body, and this body. So what I want to do is I want to pattern these two bodies. Okay, so the way I built this, I made the uh, the cut out here for the uh, cowhide with a fit spline so that it's all nice continuous piece. So if I pick an edge, it's all the way around. I can use that for my pattern. If you look at the first video that I did, I explained about that and why you need to do that sort of thing. So I want a curve driven pattern here and I want to pick my edge. Either one of these doesn't matter. And features and faces? Oh no. In this case, I want bodies. I want my two bodies, that body and that body. Put them both in here. But if you notice here, we've got no preview. What the heck's going on with that? No preview. Oh, Well, with a 3D type pattern, and that's what this is, we've got to have a face normal. In this case, basically just this face of the cowhide here will give me what I need. If I click on that, I can see, oh, look, now I've got a preview. Perfect. Now, I just need to add some more. That's not enough. Make that about 70 and OK and OK. So there we go. We've added stitches to our baseball and following this three-dimensional curve. 
Guy Dolosier, Senior Applications Engineer at Go Engineer. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.